Hey, welcome to the channel. Today we are going to put together and talk about this prefab chicken coop and chicken run combo from Avituvin and or Avituvin. I'm not sure how you say it, but we're going to talk about its strengths and weaknesses, and I know there are some weaknesses, but I'm really thankful for the company sending this to me. And we're going to talk about whether or not an off-grid homesteader can utilize something like this. Let's get this thing together. Now I have seen a lot of pictures of these on the company's website and they have a huge variety of different size coops, rabbit hutches, and things like that. And they all look very, very nice, but we're gonna talk about whether the construction is good and whether it's practical to have one of these in our situation. Now this finished coop and run combination should look like this cool little drawing here on the box. Let's see how close we get. So what's nice is the instructions are clear and each piece is very clearly marked. So hopefully that makes putting this together very easy. Now if I didn't mention before, this is the AIR27 model. They have a lot of different models, a lot of different configurations, and this one you can actually buy additional AIR27 models and connect them together for a larger coupe in different configurations. You see, you've got it going this way, you've got a kind of a corner deal here, uh, which is kind of neat. Let's get this together and see if there are any issues that we run into and hope that it helps you out when you assemble yours. So as we're assembling these pieces together, I noticed a few things good and a few things not so good. One of the nice things is that these pieces are doweled. So when you're putting them together, they fit, they slip into place, and then you can screw them together. So that is a really nice little feature that they added to make it easier to put together. But let's take a look at this ramp and I'll tell you some issues with it. So in the instructions, it doesn't really say where to put these hinges. Now, obviously the hinge point is gonna go below right here, but if you get these screws too high and you don't put them exactly perfect, then your door is gonna have trouble. You're gonna put the screws through the track of the door and I want you to watch out for that. Also, with these small hinges here and these small screws, I recommend just using a screwdriver because my drill driver is just way too powerful, even on the smallest clutch setting, uh, to put these in here. This wood is incredibly soft. And that's another concern of mine that we're gonna have a lot to talk about towards the end of the video, so stick around. Now for all the other screws that are going into the larger end pieces, you can use a drill driver. Just make sure you set your clutch. I have mine set on seven out of 14, and that seems to be pretty good, so about halfway. So here's a headache saving trick for you. They have these little latches here that are spring loaded, which are really nice. Actually, all the hardware on this is really nice. But when you're trying to put these parts and pieces together that have the doors, they're flopping all around on you and it's kind of a headache. So here's a trick. Put the little latch on first before you try to manipulate the piece and attach it to the rest of the pieces. And that's what I did here. You can see these latches are just have one screw in it because they connect to the other piece. But it prevented these doors from flopping around on me when I was trying to get this piece together with the end walls. It saves a little bit of annoyance doing that. Oh, well, here we go. It took me about an hour and a half to get this together. So pretty easy and pretty quick. And it's a great looking little coop and run. We're gonna talk about what I like about it and some challenges with this thing. So of course I mentioned earlier that I really like the latches and they just flop back close or spring back close, which is nice. It's got ventilation up here at the top. I wish it had one of these on the other side because cross ventilation is really important. So we've got a couple of roosting bars that you can actually take out, which are right here in the middle, and that's nice. We've got a tray to take out the, uh, the chicken litter, the manure, which is really cool. A, a slide out tray, so that's awesome. All right, we're gonna close this back up. I don't really necessarily understand what this door is here for. Uh, it's really kind of, kind of a mystery. And we've got the door on the run right here in case you need to clean anything out of here, which is really cool. And we have the door to the coop itself for the chicken. So we've got this neat little sliding handle here, which opens the door on the inside. 
You know, if I didn't mention earlier, it has this little metal bracket that attaches to the outside. So when you're moving it around, this isn't dragging on the ground and getting stuck because if it did, it would just rip it right off. You can see mine doesn't sit perfectly on it and that's because the instructions don't tell you really where to put it on here. So I just put it kind of towards this side of the door, but that's definitely not far enough to fit on the bracket properly, but it's no big deal. Over here we have our nesting box on this side and it's got this really funky latch here that nothing's really gonna get in. You gotta kind of sl slide it this way, slide it up, and inside we have got our nesting box. This is divided into two and you can actually leave this out because we noticed that chickens really don't mind co-nesting and laying eggs. And these are really big nesting boxes for a chicken, so that's nice. And of course we've got our wheels on this side and our handle around here where we can just pick it up and roll it around. Now we've also got this clear plastic top here. And I know on some of the older models, I think the older model of this that I've seen before, which is only about a year old, it actually had a roof on this portion. And I'm gonna talk about this. Okay, challenge number one. We've got all these cool pieces of hardware everywhere to keep things fairly secure, but there's no latch on this top portion here, and I don't know why. I don't know why they switched from a roof over this portion to this odd, clear plexiglass thing over the top, this little flat roof. And unfortunately, with this flat roof being like this, even though it's got these channels cut in it for water drainage, water is going to sit up here. And then there's absolutely no way that this is secure anymore because this top just lifts up any creature can get in here really easily. All you have to do is buy a little latch for that or they need to supply a latch for that. And I don't know if they forgot it in my package or not, but that's not gonna work. Now the fit and finish is nice and all these parts and pieces go together flawlessly. All screw holes are aligned, everything's lined up nicely. Everything slides and works well and it's square. It's not twisted or anything like that. So let's talk about materiality. This seems to be some sort of white pine or maybe a yellow pine, and it's fairly light. Now this looks beautiful, the way they put these joints together, this siding piece here, it looks really, really nice. But unfortunately, it's not gonna take a lot of rain or weather for very long before it starts to rot out. What I'm gonna need to do is go around and meticulously actually add caulking into all these joints to start to to seal them up and to make it weatherproof. Additionally, I think this is maybe a stain on here, but it could be just a light primer. And it's going to have to be painted if it's going to remain outside in the elements. And that's gonna be a common theme around the entire thing. This needs to be sealed. But what do we have here? We've got a big gap where water can just pour into down onto our nesting box floor, which is made of press board. And if that happens, that press board is gonna disintegrate pretty quick. So I need to put some sort of flap here, which is sealed at the top, that's gonna drain the water over this gap and onto our roofing and down, so that it's not getting inside at all. Now, even the way we have these cap pieces on the edges of our roofing, it looks awesome, but water is going to get in there. It's gonna get in right at the corner here and start to rot out these end pieces. Now, the way the roof attaches is by screwing it directly through the roofing and into these side pieces right here, these side walls. And unfortunately, water's just gonna get right into all of those. So I'm gonna need to go back and seal up each one of these screw penetrations through the roof. Obviously, you never want holes in your roof. And then I really honestly don't know what to do with this side. Obviously, this joint here needs to be sealed or water's gonna sit in here and just completely rot this out. But it's not angled in any way. It just has these flat pieces. Like I said, the older model had a pitched roof on it. I don't know why they took that away. Now, it's really easy to pick up and move around. I'm maybe a foot off the ground on this side. I picked it up a foot and it's rolling on a hard surface with no issues. However, if I'm gonna roll it out here, the wheels on it are way too small. So even though these wheels work really well on a hard surface, it rolls really easily. 
it's not going to work well trying to drag it somewhere through grass. So also a big thing in terms of materiality is our bottom rail. In my climate out here where it's going to sit on the ground, these small pieces of uh, white pine aren't going to last but a few months. We've got termites here, we've got a really wet spring, and it's going to rot out super fast. What I'm going to have to do is actually take some treated scrap or some treated new pieces, this is a treated 2x4, and screw it to the bottom of this entire thing. That will keep the termites away from this portion and hopefully that will prevent these small pieces on the bottom from rotting out really fast. So this thing retails for $300. Is it worth it? Well, I'm going to tell you right now that you can't build something with all those materials and the design of it because I know how much goes into design. You're not going to build that for $300. Bucks. So if you're looking for something like this, it is a good deal for $300 for this thing. It'll fit two to three chickens. I wouldn't put more than three in it probably. Plus we need to find room for a waterer and a feeder inside of this thing. So that might be a little bit of a challenge also. So do I think this is an appropriate item for an off-grid homesteader to have? Maybe. So what we are going to use it for is an isolation coop. I've had some sick chickens before and I've had some problem chickens, some bully chickens, and obviously ones that get bullied. So you can easily use this to separate a chicken or a couple of chickens that are having issues. And what I'm gonna do with it is I'm gonna take it over here and I'm going to put it behind our electric fence on this coop over here. Now, even though this might not be the best for me out on my homestead, it might work for you in a suburban or city type situation. So if you're just getting into homesteading and being a little more self-sufficient, you are allowed backyard chickens where you live, this would be a good thing to buy. It's convenient, it goes together easily, it looks great. If you want to put a rabbit in here, that would work really, really well also. Just keep in mind, you're probably gonna have to seal up the screw holes and give it a paint job. But I want to once again thank AV Tuvin for sending this to us and asking us to review it. It's really a beautiful little design and it'll work really well for us to isolate some problem chickens. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them for me in the comment section below. Now go check out this video right here, which tells you exactly when to move your chicks from the brooder to your coop. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.